the principles of natural justice. So, let us understand what are the principles of natural justice. See, there are three principles of natural justice. The first principle being that no man shall be punished without being heard or the right to be heard. That is, no adverse order should be passed against anybody without hearing him out, without considering his defenses. So this is the famous right to be heard, also called as the Audi Alterum Bartum Rule. So this is the Audi Alterum Bartum Rule or the right to be heard. The second principle of natural justice is that every authority should act without bias. That is to say there should be no personal bias when the authority takes his decisions. And number three is, no man shall be a judge in his own case. So these are the three principles of natural justice. Now as far as Volume so as far as the spirit, <coughs> spirit of uh, underlying principle, underlying spirit of these principles, principles is concerned, the underlying spirit of course is fair play in action. If you recall, in our last lecture, while discussing the difference between procedure established and due process, I had used the word fairness, reasonableness, non-arbitrariness. So basically, principles of natural justice is nothing but fair play in action. And these three principles highlight the fair play in action. Let us see how. The first principle I am saying is that no adverse order against anybody without being heard. What does it mean? It means before you punish somebody or before you pass an adverse order, then at least first hear out his defenses. So that is the first principle. Second principle says every authority should act without bias, bona fide manner. Suppose you have a neighbor who is also a licensing authority and you have a fight with him. And next day when you go to his office, he uses that against you. That means he is acting with bias. So that is the second principle that every authority should act without bias. And third principle says, no man shall be a judge in his own case. Suppose there is a judge who has to take a decision. And he knows that by his decision, his near and dear ones will get benefited. So he should not take the decision. Rather, he should recuse himself. He should recuse himself from the matter and let another judge take over, let another judge decide over the case. And this is not just about the judge, this is about any decision making authority, DM, SP, even executive. If they know that by, by their decision, their near and dear ones are going to be, get benefited, they should not take the decision. See why, what is the reason behind it? Suppose they are the most honest of the persons and suppose they do not misuse their position and give a very objective decision. And later on, I and you, the public, comes to know that by his decision, his near and dear ones could have benefited. Will we ever feel that justice has been done? No. Some lingering doubt will remain in the mind. So there is a very important principle of law which says, justice should not only be done, it should be seen to be done. Justice should not only be done, the general public should feel that justice has been done. It should be seen to be done. And that is why the person should recuse himself from the, from the decision making process. So we have understood these three principles. The purpose behind principles of natural justice is to humanize the decision making process. Humanize decision making process means any decision making authority, be it the judicial, executive, quasi-judicial, familial, if anybody is taking the decision, 
then it should be in a fair, reasonable manner. That is the humanizing of the decision making process. And I said, even if it is a family authority, see, even if in a family the decision is being taken and some dispute arises, finally that dispute will reach the court of law and the judge will ask the authority of the family, did you follow the principles of natural justice before taking the decision? So that is why even the family level decision has to be after considering the principles of natural justice. Now, what is the source of principles of natural justice? Is it contained in the constitution? Answer is no. It is not contained in the constitution explicitly. Rather, it has been inferred by the Supreme Court of India. So, Supreme Court inferred it from Article 21 in the Maneka Gandhi's case and later from also Article 14 in the famous Brajonath Ganguly case. In the Brajo Nath Ganguly case. So thus we understand that PNJ may be inferred from two different articles, Article 21 as well as Article 14 of the Constitution. So then what is the trend regarding principle of natural justice? What is the constitutional trend? See, the trend is that principles of natural justice has not been described as part of basic structure of the constitution yet it is as good as basic structure of the constitution and therefore the trend is that it is read with every article of the constitution so it is present everywhere in the constitution and supreme court says that it is part of the common conscience of every civilized society there is no need to enact it or incorporate it or even document it because it is inherent part of the constitution and so we will read it with every article of the constitution. That is the trend regarding principles of natural justice. In fact, where there is absence of principle of natural justice, there controversy arises. I will give you two famous examples where the exercise of power has become controversial because of absence of principle of natural justice. First is contempt of court. You know, if somebody disrespects a judge, then that judge will issue a notice against the person that why should you not be sent to jail for disrespecting the court? Now the judge who had issued the notice, the same judge also hears the matter. So he becomes a judge in his own case. That is why a parliamentary committee on law and justice has suggested that this judge who had issued the notice should recuse himself from the matter. Let another judge hear the contempt proceeding. That will be in line with the principles of natural justice. Another famous example is you must have heard the lawmakers enhance their own salary. So the suggestion in public domain is that if they have the power to enhance their own salary, they are becoming a judge in their own case. In fact, there should be an independent authority. Independent authority means authority independent from legislature and executive and let them decide on the hike in the salary of the lawmakers. In fact, such type of authority is there in United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and even a small country like Bhutan has it. Then why not India? So that's an overview of principles of natural justice. Raise your doubts. Administrative tribunal, why does why will it amount to bias? Tell me why. No, see, uh, IAS officers who are sitting there, they are senior officers, post retirement, they sit there. That does not mean that they are having any soft corner for any IAS officers. Both the sides, there are civil servants, they are hearing the matter. First principle is the right to be heard. That is, if you have to punish somebody or even pass an adverse order against somebody, at least hear him out first. His defenses should be considered. So, the uh, principle of social justice is not part of basic structure. In fact, it has never been defined as part of basic structure, but it is as good as basic structure.
because Supreme Court says that it is part of common conscience of every civilized society. There is no need to incorporate it in the constitution, no need to even document it. We will read it everywhere because it is inherent in the constitution. So take down the summary. Principles of natural justice. Number one, the right to be heard or the Audi Alterum Partum Rule, Audi Alterum Partum Rule, no man shall be punished, or even adverse order, be passed against him, without being heard. Without being heard. Number two, every authority, every authority should act without personal bias. That is, in a bona fide manner. Number three, no man shall be a judge in his own case. But the underlying principle is the spirit of fair play in action justice should not only be done rather seen to be done It is consistent with the concept of rule of law. Para. PNG are not explicitly are not explicitly mentioned in any article however they have been inferred from article 21 within bracket Manika Gandhi's case and Article 14 Brajonath Ganguly case. Brajonath Ganguly case. Although it is not Adi. Although it is not part of basic structure yet it is as good as it yet it is as good as it. It is part of the common conscience
of every civilized society and is inherent in the constitution there is no need to enact or even document it it should be read with every article it should be read with every article para in the absence of pnj the exercise of power becomes controversial so point 1 a parliamentary committee on law and justice has recommended that the judge issuing notice in contempt matter should recuse himself should recuse himself and point number 2 there is suggestion in public domain that there should be an independent authority to decide on the raise in the salary of the lawmakers so this brings us to the first debate under article 21 and that is the debate on privacy the right to privacy so what is right to privacy right to privacy is the right to be left alone that is the right that one's personal space or intimate zone will not be intruded upon so the right of non intrusion or the right to be left alone that is right to privacy why has this controversy arisen because in india there is no specific article in part 3 which is the source of right to privacy for instance in england there is a definite source to right to privacy and that is a legal principle which is there in england which says every man's home is his castle so every man's home is his castle means right to privacy arises from there in america the source of right to privacy is the fourth amendment you know bill of rights the 10 amendments so the fourth amendment is right to privacy but in india there is no article which is saying right to privacy hence the controversy arose when aadhaar act 2016 was brought into action and because this act allows the government to collect personal data biometric data that is iris scan and the fingerprints and this also the government can share with others so because of this controversy arose that can aadhaar act give this this type of power to the government for collecting the biometrics that is 
iris scan and the fingerprints. So those who were against the Aadhaar Act, they raised before the Supreme Court of India the ground that Aadhaar Act violates right to privacy. And right to privacy has been inferred as a fundamental right in Maneka Gandhi's case, which is a seven judges bench judgment. And therefore, Aadhaar Act should be struck down. Now, government needed to defend the Aadhaar Act. So, it came out with an eight judges bench judgment of 1954, which says there is no right to privacy. This is the famous MP Sharma versus Satish Chandra case. So, seven judges was saying there is right to privacy and eight judges was saying there is no right to privacy and therefore controversy arose. So, before decision could be taken on the Aadhaar Act, the matter was referred to a nine judges bench and that nine judges bench passed a judgment in the year 2017 and that is the famous Putta Swami judgment of 2017. Let us understand as to what has been said in the Putta Swami judgment regarding the fundamental right to privacy. So, I will go point wise. Let us understand this judgment threadbare. Point number one, if I ask you which article or what is the source of right to life and personal liberty, which article will you quote? 21. But this judgment is saying 21 is not the only source of life and liberty. Of course, that is the source. But right to life and liberty is inherent in part 3. That means don't narrow it down to article 21. It is there in various articles of part 3. So the first thing this judgment has done is it has broad based right to life and personal liberty. Now you cannot narrow it down to article 21 of the constitution. Second point is again if I ask you what according to you should be the source of right to privacy. So which article will you quote? 21. But this judgment is saying 21 is not the only source of right to privacy. Right to privacy can be inferred from various articles of part 3. So the judgment has broad based right to privacy as well. Now you cannot pinpoint right to privacy to article 21 because the judgment is saying it can be inferred from various articles of part 3. Which is to say this judgment has established that right to privacy is a fundamental right guaranteed under article 32 of the constitution and right to privacy is inferred from various articles of part 3. Thus, it has upheld Maneka Gandhi's case and it has struck down the MP Sharma versus Satish Chandra case. That is point number one, that right to privacy established as fundamental right. But this judgment should be celebrated for another important reason apart from establishing the status of privacy. The next important reason is that for the first time, this judgment made right to privacy very real and very practical. Till now, we used to study right to privacy issue wise that in this particular issue, right to privacy is involved. In that particular issue, right to privacy is involved. This judgment is saying that right to privacy is present everywhere. You cannot have a working democracy in India without right to privacy. So suddenly it opened our eyes to where all is right to privacy actually functional. So that is the reason why this judgment should be celebrated. It has made right to privacy very concrete and not just a philosophical concept. Let us see where all is right to privacy operating in our society. Point number one is that right to privacy acts as the core of human dignity, which is to say, wherever from here onwards you read the word dignity, understand that at the core of it is sitting right to privacy. Without privacy, there cannot be dignity. Number two, that right to privacy allows a liberal democracy to function in India. What is a liberal democracy? A liberal democracy is that which gives certain entitlements and rights to the citizens of India. That is to say, a liberal democracy is that in which a person has the right to enjoy the fruits of his choices. Can you even think of enjoying any right 
without right to privacy let us understand i am taking a class here in the lecture hall and i have the right to exclude outsiders from entering this hall this is my right to privacy at work from here you will go back to your homes and enjoy the luxury of your homes and you will have the right to exclude outsiders from entering your home that is your right to privacy at work in fact you will realize that enjoyment of right is not possible without right to privacy so we understand that right to privacy is the very basis of liberal democracy in india further right to privacy protects certain things the first thing it protects is not merely life and personal liberty rather it protects the eternal values which are the basis of life and personal liberty then it protects our intimate zone what is our intimate zone our body our life family marriage sexual orientation and procreation these six things have been defined by the putta swami judgment as part of the intimate zone and right to privacy protects all these aspects of the intimate zone further it protects the redesigning of my intimate zone what is what does that mean it means this that here i am standing before so many students delivering a lecture and after 10 30 i want to redesign my intimate zone i want to remain secluded i have redesigned my intimate zone and my right to privacy allows me to redesign my intimate zone and everybody will have to respect it they will not intrude upon my seclusion and this redesigning of intimate zone it allows not only in private space but also in public space so i can go and sit in the teachers room that's a private space but this redesigning can also be done in public space which is to say suppose i am somebody from kerala and i want to roam the delhi streets in the traditional dress of the kerala state i can do that nobody will interfere with my right to privacy i can wear the traditional dress of kerala and roam the streets of delhi even in public domain the redesigning of my intimate zone will be protected thus right to privacy protects our composite culture so it's not just about individual the right to privacy till now we thought is about individual but suddenly this judgment is saying right to privacy is not just about individual right to privacy is about nations right to privacy is about societies it is about our composite culture without privacy you cannot have composite culture then the next question is what is the nature of right to privacy if you recall the nature of fundamental rights generally is negative injunctions very rarely it gives positive obligation upon the state like article 21 capital a does that state shall provide free and compulsory education so very rarely positive obligation so what is the nature of right to privacy answer is it has a dual nature it has negative aspect as well as positive aspect so one aspect is state shall not violate right to privacy that is the negative injunction and there is a positive as well state shall take positive steps to protect right to privacy so today itself we will be discussing aadhar judgment in aadhar judgment supreme court has said that state shall take steps for a robust data protection mechanism to be put in place robust data protection mechanism that's positive obligation is it not so it has both negative as well as positive aspect it has got a dual nature next question is is right to privacy absolute answer is no it may be reasonably restricted and when restrictions are put on right to privacy then such restrictions should pass the triple test what is that triple test number 1 restriction may be imposed only by legislation executive order cannot restrict it number 2 there should be a legitimate purpose in that legislation and number 3 the legislation should pass the proportionality test now what is proportionality test see i told you legit the legislation should have a legitimate purpose so proportionality test means this the legislation will try to promote some purpose so to the extent that it is promoting the purpose 
only to that extent it should restrict the privacy so to the extent that it is promoting the purpose only to that extent it 